All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us again. I have with me uh, Mr. Matthew Condi, and he is representing CMMC Managed, uh, more or less a new practice, because obviously CMMC didn't re- didn't exist before 2019. And so, Matthew, it'd be great if you could just go ahead and start us off. So let's get into 3.048, again, collecting audit information into one or more central repositories. How would an assessor, and this is not prescriptive, um, but based off the assessor training and kind of the way that you have, also the assessment guides are out. So really, we're just basing this off of what is is uh, available today. You know, what are what should how should companies prepare for what an assessment might look like? Uh, what may what might an assessment look like? And what are some things that really um, are foundational that a company should be prepared be prepared to show or demonstrate or uh, walk through an assessor with? Uh, great, thanks for having me today. Uh, thanks for Summit Seven uh, for having me and let me kind of share this time with you. Thanks for mentioning that the assessment guides came out, which were very telling, in maturity level one and up to maturity level three. The DOD and we as assessors, when we're going through these, these assessments, they're open book tests. We want you to pass. So use the assessment guide, go through it practice by practice, and apply what the kind of standard and guideline might look like and how you can be um, not only implementing, but showing us how you are implementing uh, that practice. But for uh, audit collect or collect audit information logs into one or more repository, what they're really looking for there is that if you have an internal system or several, uh, you know, a network, where in a single place can the responsible party for that audit log go ahead and review those on a weekly or monthly basis, maybe spit mm-hmm. out some reports uh, that'll show a history of these audit logs actually being examined. Um, and we're gonna look at your documentation. So your SSPs, does it show who's responsible for looking at the audit logs? Uh, are, is the SSP signed off by leadership and fully implemented? Um, and then we're gonna go talk to the people who are actually gonna be responsible, either an IT manager or maybe a CISA, whatever it might be, and say, okay, for this particular practice, show me where your central audit logs are and let's take a look at one of the recent reports. Okay, so now I've seen documentation, I've, I've examined, uh, interviewed the person responsible for that practice, and then potentially a third, although we only need two of three, potentially a third would be a demonstration of going through the audit log and maybe seeing one of the reports. That's perfect. That's perfect. Um, you know, one of the one of the common questions we may, may get is from a technology standpoint, uh, what are what are some of the common technologies you would see being used uh, to achieve this end? And uh, typically, how do you see that role being broken out? Like, what what is the uh, type of administrator you you would commonly see? And then maybe thirdly, so again, technology, who would be doing this type of activity? Um, and then maybe lastly, if you can remember this, uh, is um, third party. You know, how would you work with a third-party organization that may be doing this on that company's behalf? Uh, so again, technology, who within an organization, again, again, thinking maybe they're sizable, uh, so we'll call it maybe 200-ish employees and up that may could have a dedicated resource or maybe not dedicated, but matrix to resource to do some of this activity. Uh, and then lastly, uh, if third-party businesses are involved that manage this, what would that look like from an assessment standpoint? Uh, right. So, again, in the SSP, it's going to assign roles and responsibilities for a lot of the practices. And I would imagine that it's going to be pretty high level for a lot of them um, to the CISOs or uh, security officers or maybe an IT manager who might be the okay. ones who get implemented to, to look at those things. As far as the actual tools they use, I, there's probably... I don't know, three dozen on the market, if not more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that can be implemented. So, having any specific one, having one um, in place, um, I think they're all, from what I can see, just as effective or efficient as the others. It really comes down to how large your enterprise is, how large your audit logs are, because you need, if you need to process, you know, hundreds, or do you need to process tens of thousands of, you know, logins per month. Right. kind of thing. Because um, going through that level of information for a single person who's responsible for it, 
would be daunting. So we would like to see some type of audit tools that could automate that system for the purpose for the person responsible and create those efficiencies um, and and spit out those reports that would show where an event might be highlighted. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The last one, working with third party vendors, it's a great question. And I imagine at a lot of levels, in fact, at every level, I think we're going to see this, that we'll come in and look at a control or a practice and the client is going to say, well, we contract with XYZ company to provide us and they'll have a basket of services that they'll provide us. Um, so in our process, what I'm going to look at is how that vendor is managing those services for that client. I'm not going to assess the vendor. Mm -hmm. as yep. a whole. I mean, just be a whole assess, separate assessment. That's absolutely right. I'm just going to assess what basket of offerings they are using to go ahead and be in compliance with, you know, I'm going to match it up against a, a certain number of practices they're hoping to be in compliance with. Um, and then how the, how the client itself is integrating those third party uh, tools. Right, right. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Matthew. I really appreciate the deep dive on that particular practice and giving just some real uh, foundational uh, knowledge and just understanding based off of your assessment training. And again, the things that are public right now, which again, uh, assessment guides being one of them. So go, go check those out. And uh, yeah, we look forward to having you back on, on some other talks in the future. And uh, this is the only beginning to this, um, not just our conversation, uh, but nevertheless, it's just the beginning. So uh, everybody buckle up and uh, thanks again, Matthew. My pleasure. Happy to, happy to be here. All right. Thanks. Take care.